Sadits, I got baited by Sab again. I was disappointed to see that Chieftain's Toa's forest strength got removed in the recent patch, as I had plans to make builds with mirages. Then I got excited again because it came back in the form of a unique item, Toa's Felling. Toa's Felling is a two-handed mace with okay physical damage and no attack speed. The Toa's chosen skill in this item works exactly like the Chieftain Ascendancy node did, but there is one exception. It's considered a spell, and because it is a triggered spell, it is doubled by Saboteur's trigger bots. Since the spell just creates mirages that do attack damage, it is not affected by trigger bots less spell damage. So on Sab, every strike or slam creates two clones that each do full damage. And this works as about a 2 to 3 times damage multiplier, depending on how cooldowns and attack speed breakpoints work out. But that alone is too simple for my builds. If you watched the Inferno Blow Decay video I made, I hinted at deeper mirage mechanics. Mirages are non-minion allies created by General's Cry, the Savior, and now Toho's Felling. They stay alive for a duration or till they do one attack and then despawn. They can't be buffed by anything involving War Cries or Fist of War, but they do inherit your extra strikes. Mirages have an interesting interaction with skills that have persistent effects. Despite the Mirage despawning, the effect will continue on. Like for Earthquake, for example, each Mirage attack creates its own aftershock, allowing you to stack 10 Earthquakes on top of each other. This also works with effects that put buffs on your character, like Inferno Blow of Immolation. Immolation is technically a debuff that explodes after a time, but with the Mirage, it still explodes at the location the Mirage despawned. That's cool and all, but taken from someone who tried to play Voltaxic Burst once, the light damage and PoE don't mix. You generally want damage to go either in front of you or on top of you for smooth mapping, but there is a way to get the best of both worlds in the form of Static Strike. Static Strike is a strike skill that applies a buff to you that pulses damage to nearby enemies. This damage can chain. With Tohoa's Mirages, they each do an attack and get the buff, causing the pulsing damage to stay on the ground where the Mirage despawned. You can see how many statics you have out with the Doho's icon on your buff bar. I can get about 12 out with consistent attacking. This clears surprisingly well. Static Strike is already known for its good clear. You just need to attack once and run around for the buff duration. Static Strike is known to snapshot buffs for the pulses. This should work with Phase Run, but I am unsure if it works correctly with Tinctures. Doho's also has a hidden clear buff to it. The skill triggers when attacking near an enemy, not hitting one. This means if you just attack the air, mirages appear and seek out nearby enemies. This works really well for clear and takes a lot of the pain away from playing strike skills. You might have also noticed that I have quite a lot of ward. Another thing I went to try was the new Yida's Stand Belt. This belt converts 60% after quality of your invasion or armor on your body into ward. One neat thing is the convert happens after Trickster's Escape Artist. This lets me triple dip the power of the new higher tier bases. I was able to get 5.1k evasion on mine with just a few dense fossils. You can get over 6k with enchants, but the new pure bases have very high stat requirements. I hit reduced attribute requirements on a tailoring orb to make mine workable. From other builds I've seen, the hybrid armor evasions seem more feasible with the requirements, but that doesn't work with my escape artist trick. Ward works as a sort of one-time overshield. Taking any damage will use up all of your ward to block that much damage and then go entirely on cooldown. The default cooldown is 2 seconds, but with ward restoration mods found on ward gear, you can reduce it further. I have it on my helm and boots, so my ward restores now in 1 second. Ward works really well with the pure evasion playstyle, but it does have a problem with spells. Spell suppression is no use due to any damage using up all of the ward. This means we have to use acrobatics, and I don't think I've used it since it's been reworked. Acrobatics converts all of your spell suppression into spell dodge at half the value, up to 75%. This fixes the problem with spells, but it makes a new problem of now needing 150% spell suppression to cap it out. We get some from the tree and the invasion mastery. Because I had to use ward helmet and boots, I had to craft flat evasion on them to enable that. But most of my spell suppression comes from my amulet, Willow Gift. Willow Gift converts Fortify's damage reduction into spell suppression. Since we don't get hit that much, the loss of damage reduction doesn't really matter, and it also perfectly caps out the spell dodge. I get Fortify from a Megalo, with the Overlord on it. The fort uptime is perfect, even just the beam zaps touching an enemy caps it out. This build surprised me. It's actually quite good, but not perfect. The damage is alright when fully stacked. I do use a Tincture, and it's quite good with zero investment. Uptime is alright, but not full. It does fall off eventually, but we can keep it up for a good maybe 10 seconds-ish. One very large flaw is the attack speed. 
Felling has no attack speed on a 1.35 base. Nothing is going to fix the speed. I couldn't even use Leap Slam, it was that slow. Luckily, the clear isn't bad thanks to the Mirage trick with them working even if you don't attack anything. But another issue is the lag. Having multiple static strikes, hitting multiple enemies, with nothing dying will quickly tank the frame rate. This was mainly an issue when doing Delirium, to the point where I unspec'd it. It's fine as long as things die, but it's an issue that has popped up every few maps that I found off-putting. Lag issues like this seem to happen anytime I do anything with trigger bots, actually. As for defensives, they were really good. Despite not very high evasion, I just didn't get hit that much. This plays like a normal evasion playstyle, but now I can tank one hit every few seconds. Ghost Dance always keeps the ES full, and Ward takes the most of the damage. You do occasionally get double tapped, and that would just look like getting one shot. Alternatively, this build is very weak to DGENs. Even just a little, a DGEN will mess up almost everything. I had a lot of issues doing Delve, as just clipping the darkness was enough to kill me off. I did also try using Ventral Cry. In theory, any damage I take should be a Savage hit, so it should be up all the time. But either I just didn't get hit, or I forgot to use it. As for the cost, it wasn't bad at all. Near Perfect Toa's fellings were dirt cheap, so I started double corrupting them. The one I got had momentum on it, and turns out this is actually DPS loss. Momentum's ramping attack speed messes with trigger breakpoints, sometimes causing me to miss a cooldown. So if you are going to do this, go for either Inspiration or Fortify. Both are better than mine. I paid 1D for my body base and then just spammed Death Fossils, it was a pretty easy graft. Well rolled ward recovery items are printed by the League mechanic and I got those for dirt cheap, and the rest I just bought for under 50 C each. The Forbiddens were very cheap when I bought them at 90c for both. Megalo was 1d and only because I wanted another usable passive along with Overlord. You can skip this if you get Fortify on the weapon corrupt though. And a Fizz Damage Light of Meaning in the Shadow area gives a lot of damage. This dropped for me, but it goes for 4d. So overall rating, I'm giving it 7 out of 10. Fairly smooth to play and surprisingly tanky. The issues I had were the slow attack speed, the lag, and I felt like I hit a DPS ceiling. I could get more if I dropped the ward gimmick. Speaking of the ward gimmick, it gets its own rating. Ward as a defensive layer gets 9 out of 10. This worked so much better than I thought it would. The trick with escape artist gives high evasion bodies some insane value, but I don't think acrobatics is the play. I think this would work a lot better on a block based setup. When doing non shadows, I think hybrid armor evasion bodies are just better objectively. And that's about all for this one. I am not sure how many builds I'm making this league. The uh, Guild Wars 2 expansion came out and I wanted to play that. Also my wrists are acting up and PoE isn't helping things.